Hey, time for your life's math and history, and we are going to take a look at graphing in radians. So, in the past videos, we've been learning all about the unit circle, and we've also been learning about what radians are. We've also understood that the special formula is 2 pi equals 360 degrees, and pi equals 180 degrees. But what if I told you that in some point your math teacher is not going to want you to use degrees? Instead, we, we've been using degrees in the past to graph angles, but instead we now have to focus on how to graph in radians. Because what if you're doing a math problem and you don't know how many degrees there is, but you do know how many radians there is, but you're not allowed to convert. Well, that's what we're going to do right now, is we are not going to be playing around with degrees, but we will use the system and the formula and the same logic to graph the angle. So right over here is a coordinate plane. It has 2 pi, pi divided by 2, pi, and 3 pi divided by 2. Oh, and yeah, that does relate to the unit circle, but right now we're just focusing on just this part. What we're going to do is we're going to solve a problem and learn as we follow it a lot. So right over here is another coordinate plane, but look, it has pi divided by 5. That fraction, what we have to do is we have to somehow use that number and transfer it over to the graph right here. So let's get started. Mathematicians love to use recommended numbers that they already know that are very helpful. Like 2 pi, pi divided by 2, pi, and 3 pi divided by 2. We can think of this just like using fractions. You know how in fractions we like to use a logic like 1 out of 4 is like part of something, then 2 out of 4 is equal to a half, 3 out of 4, and our whole is 4 out of 4? We can actually use the same kind of logic when we graph radians. When you graph the angles in radians. For example, this one is very, very easy because you have pi divided by 5. We know that the pi right here, let's say, is 1 out of 1. And we also know that this right here is going to represent half of it. So we could say that this is half. That explains why we have a pi divided by 2. But what about a pi divided by 5? Well, we know that 1 fifth is a lot smaller than 1 half. Therefore, it's going to be around here. So we have to somehow draw 5 equal pieces that go from 2 pi all the way to pi. Oh, and yeah, this will not be written by measurement. I'm just going to make some random cuts. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This line doesn't count. And since we have pi divided by 5, we can assume that right here is our final answer. Pi divided by 5. That is the angle right here. So that is how we graph a radian. Let's try to do another problem. So right over here is another coordinate plane. But right over here is another number. It's negative pi divided by 7. So let's get started. But wait, there is something we have to do. It does make sense it has a pi and a denominator of 7. But notice how there's a negative sign right in front of the number. That means instead of going to the top, we have to go to the bottom. Meaning, it is going down clockwise around. That explains when the fraction was positive, we go up. But when it's negative, we have to go down. But we have to use the same logic. So going from 2 pi all the way to pi, since there are 7, we have to do it 7 times. 
in terms of slices. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when it says negative pi divided by seven, then it says that we have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this angle right here would represent negative pi divided by seven. It's kind of the same thing as saying negative 1 pi divided by 7. But the 1's not even there. If it was like negative 4 pi divided by 7, then we would say 1, 2, 3, 4. Then this right here would be negative 4 pi divided by 7. So if there was another number other than 1 in front of the pi, then it's not going to be touching the standard line right here. So, y yeah, it, it basically is like playing around with fractions. It's kind of the same idea, the same logic. But there is something that we should think about before moving on. Sometimes there are more complex fractions. We've been playing around with the simple ones, just like this one and this one. But what happens if we try to ask this question right here? How many pi divided by 9's would make a full rotation around the graph? Hmm, how are we going to do that? Hmm, let's think for a moment. Since we're playing around with radians, and since we know from the top of our head that 360 degrees is equal to one rotation, then the formula yesterday or the formula in the radians video, it says that 2 pi is equal to 360 and pi is equal to 180. So the logic is, if we have 2 pi and that's equal to 360, and then we have pi is equal to 180, the one that question says how many pi divided by 9 would force us to make a full rotation, and 360 is the full rotation, then some kind of number, let's say x, has got to be right in front of the pi to force it to go around the circle one time. What can we do? Well, since we have a 9 below here, we need to double it and put something right above there. So 18 would be a really good number, because when you say 18 divided by 18 pi divided by 9, and you cancel these two out, you get 2 pi. And the funny thing is, 2 pi is going to be equal to 360 degrees, meaning that it would force the thing, it would force the angle to go around the circle once in a full rotation. So if you double the denominator and put it onto the top, and you get 2 pi, you'll know that it's going to be one full rotation. When we have pi equals 180 degrees, then we could say what number in front of pi is going to be right here. Well, since we have a 9 there, and since we know that doubling it would be one full rotation, putting the same number as a denominator will make it into half of the rotation. And when you say pi, if you say 9 divided by 9, you just get pi, which means pi is equal to 180 degrees. Even though we may look like we're breaking the rules of degrees, we're actually not because we're not converting to degrees. We're just using that same kind of logic to help us graph the angle in radians and to help us learn what it looks like and how you visualize it. So if we know how to play around with this, and if we understand that, then let's do a challenge problem. So right over here is another coordinate plane, and the challenge is we have 14 pi divided by 9. So how are we going to do that? Yeah, what we can do is we will have to use more than half of the thing. So right over here, we know that 14 is greater than 9. So we will understand that this is going to be more than half of the rotation. But it's not the full rotation because 14 is not 2 times of 9. 
here's what happens. We have to make nine of the lines. So I wrote it out beforehand because it's really hard to accurately make 18 lines that go around the full rotation. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, half, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> so right here is going to be, I'll just color it in so you can like visually see what's happening. It's going to be 14 pi divided by 9. Whoa! That is very, very complicated to draw. If you ever tried this on your math test, your teacher is not gonna, is not gonna take points away and mark it as incorrect. Because if you have the right idea, and if the shaded in angle, or your labeled angle, is around the same area as the teacher's answer key, then the teacher will not really care how even or how accurate the angles are. All what she or he really cares about is where the location of that angle is, according to 2 pi. So the angle goes all the way around here. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. So we know that we have graphed it, so we can check it off. But sometimes your assignment might want you to do the reference angle and the code terminals. Let's try the reference angle first. So going from the previous video, the reference angle is the angle that matches up with the line of the side terminal. So here's the x-axis. Here's the x-axis, pi and 2 pi. If this 14 pi divided by 9 is here, which x-axis is closer? Yeah, the pi right here is closer. So we have to go this way. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And the crazy thing is, since we're playing around with radians that looks like fractions, right over here it looks like that around 4 pi divided by 9 or 5 pi divided by 9 is going to be the reference angle. I'm going to say 5 pi divided by 9 because 4 pi divided by 9 is just based off my drawing, which you don't want to do. If you do 14 minus 5, you get 9. And 9 pi divided by 9 is half of the circle, which means it's touching the x-intercept. So that is going to be our reference angle. What about the co-terminals? The co-terminals could be found, you can find the co-terminals just by using the fractions as a way to help you. We have 14 pi over 9. There are two things we can do. We can find a positive and a negative. To find the positive co-terminal, what we could do is try to double it. So 14 times 2 is going to be 28. So 28 pi divided by 9 means that there's going to be two full rotations. And it will lead up to the same space right over here. If you wanted to do the reverse way, then you can subtract. Since we know that 18 pi divided by 9 is the full lo rotation, if we do 18 and 14 and find the difference, 18 minus 14 is going to be 4 pi. If we do 4 pi divided by 9, but if we put it as a negative number, that can be another coterminal going from here, the standard, all the way to here. So our positive coterminal, 28 pi divided by 9. And our negative coterminal is going to be negative 4 pi divided by 9. So if you try to think of this as fractions, it's going to be very, very easy. I think the hardest part about this video is trying to draw the lines as accurate as I can to show an example. But remember, your math teacher is not going to be so strict on the drawing in terms of like how accurate the lines are. All they really care about is where you mark your final angle as a radian. I hope this video has helped you understand graphing in radians. Thank you for watching Topping and Lines Math Industry. Like and subscribe.